To stay updated, subscribe to TJA Academy. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we are going to discuss static and dynamic forecasting. Here some brief discussion on static and dynamic forecasting. Uh, let's consider a static model here y is the dependent and x is the independent variable. And this is the static model. And here the another model, here the y is the dependent variable, x is the independent variable, and another is an independent variable which is nothing but the lag of dependent variable lag of dependent variable here yt minus 1 which is lag of dependent variable called dynamic term this term is called dynamic term in this model in absence of lag dependent variable in absence of lag dependent variable model will not be considered as a dynamic model it means in any model if there is a dynamic term then it is called a dynamic model otherwise the model would be called static model here there are two types here we are going to discuss two types of uh, forecasting with regression static and dynamic forecasting here a static forecast uses the actual values of independent variables in making the forecast means actual values of x and y t minus 1 or here values of x on the other side dynamic forecasting dynamic forecast uses the values of previous forecasted value of dependent variable to compute the next one I repeat dynamic forecast uses the value of previous forecasted value of the dependent variable to compute the next one let's discuss these two types in detail here there are two tables uh, this shows the this will show the uh, static forecast procedure and this will show the dynamic forecast procedure here this series of y this is the series of x and this is nothing but the lag of y here 2 and 10 is the lag of 2 so this is the 10 15 the lag 1 of 15 is 12 so here is the value of 12 so this is nothing but lag of dependent variable or y this is value of x and this is the value of y and these are the values of y these are the values of x and these are the lag value of y so in a static forecast as we have discussed that in a static forecast uses the actual values actual values of independent variables so here x is the exogenous variable and these are the actual values of x here y is the lag dependent variable considered as an independent variable and these are the actual values of y t minus 1 so first we have to run our regression after taking some observation let's suppose we have taken observation from 2007 to 2016 and run any regression model now we are going to forecast here let's suppose if this is the value of x and this is the lag value of y here you can see here 2000 y of 2016 considered as a lag of 2017 so here is the 35 let's suppose the forecasted value is 38 using these actual values in next period the forecasted value is 42 using these actual values right and in this 
the same procedure the new for passing value is 44 and other one is 47 these are the forecasted value of y by using the actual previous values the actual previous values so these are the forecasted values by using the actual previous values so this is the static forecast but in dynamic forecast let's suppose we have run our initial model and considered the data from 2007 to 2016 now this is the value of 2016 used as a lag value in 2017 let's suppose 35 here 35 is the value of 2016 and considered as a lag of 2017 now we are going to forecast the value of y by using this exogenous variable value of exogenous variable and using this lag value of dependent variable so let's suppose the new value is 38 why it is 38 because we can see that the in the values of independent variable either x exogenous variable or lag dependent variable are same with this now the new uh, forecasted value is 38 In dynamic forecast when we are going to forecast the next value in dynamic forecast uses the value of previous forecasted value of the dependent variable to compute the next one and this is the forecasted value so in dynamic forecast this value would be considered as a lag independent variable like 38 now we are going to forecast this value and it would be 43 let's suppose now this value would be considered as a lag value like 43 and the new value is 46 now consider this forecasted value as a lag value is 46 and the new value is 48 so in a static forecast we have used the actual values for forecasting of dependent variable on the other side in dynamic forecast we have used the forecasted value of one period as a lag of another period so this is the procedure of dynamic forecast and this is the procedure of actual forecast what we have done basically we have done in sample forecast and in sample forecast utilizes a subset of available data to forecast values like we have considered we we have a data from 2007 to 2020 but we have used for initial regression from 2007 to 2016 this is called a subset of available data to forecast values outside the estimation period like 17 18 19 20 these are the outside of estimation period because our estimated period is from 2007 to 2016 this is also called ex post forecast and uh, we have discussed this in detail in our previous lecture so this is our model which we have used in our regression uh, dynamic model because here is a dynamic term so this is the procedure of static and dynamic forecast now we are going to apply in reviews let's suppose this is our initial model GDP and F, uh, FDI where GDP is the dependent variable dependent variable is GDP Now we are going to run our initial regression model. So quick estimate equation. The first variable is GDP, which is dependent variable C space FDI. Here we are going to use a subsample. Uh, we have uh, our whole sample uh, available sample is from 1981 to 2009. 
but we are going to use a subset of the sample is from 1981 to 2000 right this is our initial model so one thing what is this this is a static or dynamic model take a pause and answer the question is this a static or dynamic model of course there is no lag of independent variable of dependent variable as independent variable it means this is basically a static model and we cannot uh, for, uh, dy perform dynamic forecast with the help of this model we have to add we have to add a lag of dependent variable this is the dynamic term and now this is a dynamic regression model then we are going to press ok this is our regression result and you can see the estimation is period from this to 2000 now we are going to forecast so we have a button here forecast so when we press this button forecast we have two options dynamic forecast and static forecast one thing you should notice that if we do not add this lag term and run the regression model so in forecast option there is no dynamic forecast because there is no dynamics in the equation means no dynamic term exists so for dynamic forecast we have to use lag dependent variable as an independent variable and we are going to run this model for, for this estimation period so okay then we are going to forecast uh, first we are going to dynamic forecast and this is called GDP DF dynamic forecast and the period of forecast is 2001 to 2009 right. and yes, suppose. this is the result of dynamic forecast now uh, Let's freeze this is it. Now we are going to perform a static forecast. So GDP static forecast. The sample period is from 2001 to 2009. Now press OK. This is the result of a static forecast. These are two forecasting. This is the result of static forecast and this is the dynamic forecast. One thing you should notice that first period of first forecasted period means 2017-2017. Whether you are going to use a static model or dynamic model, the first period forecast is the same because these values are same for both static and dynamic right and uh, now how can we find whether which model is better for forecasting uh, whether static model is better or dynamic model so there is forecast evaluation of the regression model there are four indicators the root mean squared error mean absolute error mean absolute percentage error and tail inequality coefficient these measures show the distance of the true value and forecasted value True value and forecasted value mean the values of y from 2017 to 2020. These are the true value, actual value and these are the forecasted value. These are the true value and these are the forecasted value. So what do these measures show? These measures show the distance of the true and forecasted value. Value of these measures should be near to zero. For better forecast performance, I repeat, value of these measures should be near to zero for better forecast performance. Values of these measures are appeared automatically when you perform static and dynamic forecasting reviews like this. 
so this is the root mean squared error mean absolute error mean absolute percentage error and third inequality coefficient now we can compare uh, these two values this is the static and this is the dynamic one this is the static for us so root mean squared error 0 0.02 here is 0 0.09 so static forecast is better than with the rmse root mean now mean absolute error is 0 0.02 and here is 0 0.07 obviously the static forecast is more better mean absolute percentage error 0 0.13 0 0.48 this is better and theory human inequality coefficient is 0 0.0009 here 0 0.002 so all measures shows that static forecast is better than dynamic forecast for this series now uh, we can compare graphically so we can open the actual values dynamic forecast and actual forecast select all these actual and forecasted series right click open as a group go to view and press graph So here you can see the blue line is the real one, red line is the dynamic forecast and green line is the static forecast and we can see here the actual and the static forecast are more closer than dynamic forecast and our major's forecast performance major also shows that static forecast is better than dynamic forecast. So this is the end of static and dynamic forecast. I hope this video helps you to understand the static and dynamic forecast in eViews. So if you like the video, please share and subscribe my channel, TJ Academy.